Hello, everybody. Hello, and welcome to SDVOE Live. I'm your host, Justin Kennington, and this is TV for Pro AV. Uh, we have, I think, a super cool show for you today. Um, a, a very special guest, uh, our dear friend of the show, Gary Kay, a, can I say it, a towering figure uh, in Pro AV. Uh, you all know him as the, the head of Rave Publications, but I think you're going to find out some of his other talents and, and abilities today. We're going to hear more about that. Um, also, and you're going to see it in just a few moments, we've made some big upgrades to our set, uh, and we've done those in relation to today's topic, which is about uh, some of the big trends that are happening in the education space, especially higher ed uh, around Pro AV technology, something we call the digital canvas. We're going to show you what that means today. We're going to talk about it with Gary uh, and see what an exciting uh, capability it can be uh, for the learning experience. Um, so after we break here, I'm going to send it over to Matt Dodd in the classroom. He's going to run you through uh, a preview of a new course here in the SDVOE Academy and make sure to look down below me and you'll find links to that course. Watch that after the show of course. Um, and then after the show we have, you guessed it, the after show. Um, the after show is super easy to watch. If you're joining us now on SDVOE Academy, all you have to do is wait for the closing credits and then sit right where you are right now. Don't touch anything. What will happen is we'll bring back Gary, we'll bring Matt and me together, uh, and we're going to interact live with you, our audience. So if you have questions that we didn't touch on in the interview, uh, or ideas, suggestions for the show, things you want to talk about, bring them to us in the chat box, which is also right below my feet down there. Uh, and, and we're going to get those questions answered for you. So, without any, any more from me at this moment, I'm going to send it over to Matt in our classroom. Matt, what have you got? Hi everybody, thanks for coming back and joining us once again here in SDVOE House. SDVOE in Education is our newest video, a newest course that we've put up on the Academy. It's great because it gives you a little bit of a, a history of where tech has been um, uh, in, the, in the, I said the early days, in my history of teaching in the classroom. So even, you know, I think back it wasn't that long ago, and I don't look that old of course, um, but it, it, it seems like an eternity ago when we were using things like acetates and overhead projectors and technology's moving on at a, a, a real pace. So I'm really looking forward to catching up with, with Gary today and finding out what he's got to say. But before we do that, uh, let's take a little look at the latest, a little clip, a little snippet of the, of the latest course uh, in Academy. And I think you'll like this one. It wasn't that long ago when lecturers used to rely on blackboards, dry whiteboards and flip charts to deliver seminars to students. We used overhead projectors and acetates to project content onto a screen long before the days of Microsoft PowerPoint or Keynote. And in order to present video footage, we wheeled in a CRT TV on a trolley with a video cassette recorder. Thank you. While it's nostalgic to look back on those days, it's fair to say we don't really miss them. And thankfully, things have massively changed since then. This course will walk you through the evolution of the classroom and give you clarity on how the modern day education space is taking full advantage of SDVOE technology. The student experience in schools and universities has changed dramatically in recent decades. Blackboards have been swapped out for smart boards to help students interact with the rest of the class directly from their own laptops. In turn, allowing the process of facilitation to transform the way they learn. Lecturers no longer need to remain at the front of a classroom. They can move around the room and interact with the class while maintaining control of the AV systems by the use of a simple client interface on a tablet. The advent of learning pods has also allowed groups of students to work together, often using a large display to share content, not just with each other, but with others within the university in real time. 
and the adoption of these learning pods in universities across the world has allowed networked AV technology to introduce new innovative educational approaches which are changing the way that students learn. Ooh. What do you think of this? <laughs> huh? Pretty good, right? Uh, I knew if you dug deep enough, you'd find the dollars. This is impressive. Well, we've, we've found some more budget, and as you can imagine, we did not spend it on carpet still. No, and it's all thanks to you, the viewer out there, so thank you very much. You know, we're, we're seeing more and more people engaging with us here at SDVOE Live. And thank you. So it's, it's thanks to you that we've, we've now got this. I'm feeling a bit emotional, Justin. This is, this is awesome. Should we tell them what this is? This is our digital canvas, right? Mm -hmm. This is that concept we wanted to talk to you about. The idea of rather than putting a single piece of content on a single display and focusing on that as, as the centerpiece of, in this case, education, Mm. Uh, having such a large display that we can now bring multiple pieces of content. Here's one as a, as a center of focus, but you know, here's what's coming up next. Uh, we'll be able to keep a history of what's been on the screen. Uh, we'll, we'll hear more when we talk to Gary about how this can be used in the classroom. Uh, mm. But this, this really shows you what that digital canvas is about. Let's see in action. Let's have some news. See how the, the whole digital canvas moves around. We've still got information you can see up here so you can still remember what we talked about last time we're not using the flip moving really valuable information uh, out the way we're keeping it in front of you this is great news this is good this is a great investment uh, justin um, this first piece building out long term building long term educational av out of short term hybrid uses it's a chunky title uh, but it was a really good piece. <laughs> uh, this is a chunky title. Yeah, the next one was a so. chunky piece. But anyway, talk us through you know your findings on this. Where, where did you? Where did, where did it take you? You know, the thesis of the article was about look, COVID hit a year and a half ago. Educational institutions had to had to make fundamental changes to how they deliver uh, education. Uh, and the article here is about how do we turn those those changes that we that we require less and less these days. How do we turn them into long-term benefits, right? What, do we, what lessons do we take? How do we leverage the technology that got built in? Uh, and one of the interesting takeaways for me was, was how much this article focused on uh, the benefits of AV over IP specifically uh, and the way AV over IP gives a classroom flexibility for what devices are in use, uh, for where those devices are located in the room. It makes it easy to sort of give an educational presentation uh, to, to the, the students in the classroom, to the students mm. maybe in an overflow classroom nearby, mm. and then to the students who are, who are remote somewhere at home or, or elsewhere. Mm. Yeah, um, totally agree. Uh, I, I think for me, it's, it's, it's really shown, and we don't like to refer to the, to the COVID-19 pandemic thing too much because, hey, it's around us all the time, but I think what it, what it did do in this space, and this, this, this article has told me, it's really forced behavioral change not just in the tutors and the teachers, it's also forced it in, in the students when it comes to using educational tech. You know, we often think that, that young people of today uh, and students alike, young and old, uh, you know, they embrace new technology all the time, but it's not entirely the case, you know, especially when it comes to the education forum. Uh, and also a, a real takeaway point for me on this was that the online services uh, have really stepped up to the plate uh, during this horrible time. They've really improved both reliability and performance uh, to make these, these online um, uh, um, remote services, these remote platforms, much more accessible to the wider market. And I think that's been a real bonus. It's been a real thing, certainly for the education piece. Um, AV over IP is really being taken far more seriously now. Uh, it's clear, this, this piece makes that clear. AV networks, dedicated AV networks are being seen, they're getting a lot more focus uh, when it comes to the change management uh, programs of these places. And there's a really good example in here as well, Justin, of the uh, University of Southern California, who in 2020 alone, they deployed an AV network uh, to 248 uh, individual network, individual learning locations, individual learning environments, just in one year alone. So good piece, uh, a, good, a, good, a good article really sort of demonstrating the, um, 
how, how AV over IP and how education technology is really uh, ramped up, it's really being ramped up in, in, the, in the space. Let's take, let's use our digital canvas, let's bring in the next piece of news, which is this one. Here he is, your friend Ari. Ari Stottle. What was, <laughs> <laughs> what was Ari telling you here? This is, this is, a, this is a sit I mean, down and have yourself a coffee read, by the way, guys. <laughs> yes. Anyone, <laughs> anyone who, who, who listens to me present too often knows that I, um, I, love, I love context and I love sort of looking at the history of things for, for mm. long term trends to understand how we got here and where we might be going. So, yeah, so yeah to, see, uh, to see this author um, start his piece on, on trends in education technology, to start with Aristotle, I said, wow, I gotta, I gotta read this. He's really throwing it back. Uh, and brought us through, you know, and, and painted a picture that's, it's obvious kind of when you think about it, but mm. I, I never thought about it. You know, uh, more than 500 years ago, the only way to do education was to have a teacher who knew things and, mm. and could just say words, you know, talk to yeah. you and explain those things to you and to deliver, and this is important, the content to you, right? And then, and then 500 years ago, suddenly we got the printing press and now, and now we can use books to learn from and the teacher can be there to facilitate what we do with those books. A hundred yeah. years ago, uh, the motion picture was invented and, and in the piece it noted uh, that Thomas Edison himself pr predicted uh, that in the very near future, probably nearer than it actually happened, uh, he said all education will happen through moving pictures and video instead of textbooks. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we're just starting to get to that place now, but, uh, but what the piece really painted a picture of that I found most interesting was a transition uh, of the educator, of the teacher, from someone whose job is to deliver content uh, into someone whose job is to interpret content. Because now, the teacher can bring in content from, from subject matter experts you know, that aren't themselves, and it's the teacher's job to facilitate and interpret rather than to just be that, that rote, memorized you know, delivery uh, of content themselves. Yeah, the teacher teaches, the student learns. That's the first thing you read when you read this article, and it immediately gets the attention. It got my attention, certainly as an educator. And it does, it's, a, it's a lovely piece. It really it goes through, um, quite chronologically, it goes through how, as you've just said, the technology has embraced and, and, and supported the fact that the, the teacher is now part of the class, uh, and not just the guy that stands there and, and purports all the knowledge, you know, pushes out the knowledge for the student to learn in any way he can can without the teacher really being engaged in that learning. And we asked you a question, viewers, about the flipped classroom. That was this question, the answers, by the way, are coming in, so that's good, thick and fast. Uh, but this, this piece, this article, kind of um, almost talks about that flipped classroom approach. By the time you get to the, to the end of it, it's, it's really turned uh, the whole concept of, you know, teachers, students learn and teachers learn. Teachers just share information. Teachers start the ball rolling and the students and the teachers together keep that ball rolling. Uh, the rolling stone gathers no moss. Uh, and I think it's having a massive impact on, on education. Um, speaking of subject Matter experts, by the way. Oh, um, incidentally, that was the news, because I know that producer Paul likes to do the sting. Do the sting, Paul. Ah, we disappeared for a second, but we're back. Here we go. Producer Paul was getting so excited oh, just, about his sting. We were talking. I was just uh, having just a coffee behind. on the sting. Yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, well, you need one for the last article. So talking of subject matter experts, we've got Gary Kay uh, coming in. Gary, as you said, uh, uh, um, a long-term friend of, of the industry. Shall we, shall we bring him in, sir? Shall we, shall we, shall we introduce him Let's to the it. SDVOE show house? SDVOE live, I should say. Hey, Gary, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. I shall leave you two to have a chat. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Gary. Um, I, I teased it a little bit in the introduction. I said everybody knows you as the, as the face and the voice of, of Rave, uh, but you have a, another gig, right? You're a professor? <laughs> I do. I do. I, since 2009, I've been teaching at the University of North Carolina. Um, started as an adjunct for the first five, maybe six years. And for the last five years, I've been a full-time professor, and I teach uh, advertising, branding, and uh, marketing classes in the School of Media and Journalism. So, so there you are. You've got you've got a classroom. You've got a room full of students. Um, you know, you you've lived in this world of AV technology. 
Uh, and now here you are as, you know, uh, let's say a real end user, you know, not just, not yeah. just a, an AV guy like, like the rest of us. Um, what's that been like? How has, in just these last, what you said, about 12 years, how have you seen classroom technology uh, evolving? It's actually a really good question because I think I sit in a very unique position in, in that I think I might be the only person who's been in AV a long time who's also an actual professor teaching using the right. gear on an everyday basis. So for the first half of my teaching career, I was very frustrated. I was teaching in an 80-year-old building with a technology that was probably 10 years old. Uh, we did have newer projectors, uh, but not anything else. They were still using overhead projectors, which no one was using. Uh, they were using document cameras, which one professor was using. They were using... Um, you know, just old technology. Uh, the screens were four by three for the most part. Um, and so I said, hey, uh, you know, I teach only with technology, meaning I didn't bring anything physical to teach with. I was always teaching, you know, plugging in my laptop and just teaching. And then, and I would bring in guests using Skype and things like that back then before, this is before Zoom. And uh, it was very frustrating because I'd have to bring in my own camera. I'd have to bring in my own uh, computer specifically for Skype, which was separate from my computer. Um, that I was generating my slides with. And that's because if, as soon as I had Skype up, they were, it was on top of the slides. I mm -hmm. couldn't have the slides up. So the person who's presenting couldn't present and talk at the same time. And of course, we didn't have production switchers in the room. So I said, hey, give me a room and let me design a room to be a super high-tech room that does exactly what I want. And, uh, and I'll, I'll get it all outfitted for you for free and test it out and see if other people like it. So I designed a room for myself, <laughs> selfishly. Went to all the brands out there, the major brands, and said, hey, will you donate equipment to this room? Which they all did and said, hey, I want to build the perfect classroom, which I wrote a case study on, which is available online. And I, and I uh, built a room that allowed me to teach nonlinear. And that's the key, is that prior to this room existing, everyone at UNC, pretty much everyone at every college nowadays, still teach linear, meaning slide one to slide two to slide three. Then if you need to show a video on YouTube, you close uh, PowerPoint or Keynote, which is mm -hmm. what I use. Then you open that back up, show slide five, six, seven, then close it and then open up a browser and then open that back up. You're kind of teaching in this linear method, which was crazy. So I taught, I built a classroom that was completely nonlinear, which is what gave birth to the concept of the digital canvas. Uh, you know, in the, in the piece we were just chatting about before, uh, the, the author noted uh, that today's higher ed students are sort of the first generation who have who have never learned from a from a textbook first uh, approach to education how does how does their you know and I'm thinking of that I'm thinking of you know all these darn kids today and their and their phones always in their face you know but but there's a cultural shift right with this generation how does the digital canvas serve today's college students you know who are so primed for consuming content from multiple places you know at the same time well, you should start with one little interesting factoid. You're exactly right in that prior to the printing press existing, you, you, you said it 540 years ago, the way that you got all your information was word of mouth. How accurate is that? Mm -hmm. Like anything written yeah. prior to the print that, that came out of the printing press, you know that history is in incredibly inaccurate. It's all based on what the person actually wrote. Nowadays, we have the ability to bring in the experts from anywhere in the world. The advantage of the digital canvas um, really, uh, well, let's talk about the concept. The concept is I have a room, whatever the size of the room is. The CTS guidelines tell me exactly what size of screen I should put in there, how big of an image I should project in the room based on the least favored viewers, the ones sitting the furthest away. Mm -hmm. And depending on how big that screen is, that tells us how, front, how far back to make the first row. Now, that needs to be updated because we'll talk about that in just a second because those, that, that data is incorrect. But the but the the but if I put a screen in based on that, then that's the size of my PowerPoint slides. But that was that concept came about prior to the digital canvas. Now what we do in our classrooms at UNC is we make the screen floor to ceiling and as wide as we can, and sometimes larger than sixteen by nine. I have one classroom where the screen is thirty two by nine, right? Like like yours. And uh -huh. so therefore I can put up my PowerPoint or keynote slide the normal size it would have been right? Which takes mm -hmm. up 
one third the size of the screen. And then I can put all my other content up at the same time. So I, so I don't ever have to close anything. I can have my mm-hmm. YouTube video playing. I can have my uh, browser up. I can have my Twitter feed for my class. The students can interact. I can have the QR code for them to actually uh, sh- wirelessly share their content. I can have anything I want up there. In fact, I can have another content from another class playing because our, our rooms are AV over IP. But, but the, the real evolution in digitals in digital canvas came with 4k because then with 4k the powerpoint slide which is up now is in full resolution with 1080 i was having to chop down the resolution to do a digital canvas but in 4k i can have it in its native resolution which in most cases you know is 720 you know 1280 by 720 but then i still have a ton of room to have more content up there right most people aren't making powerpoint slides that are much higher than 720 or maybe maybe 1080 which is still one fourth the resolution of of uh of, of a 4k but here's the thing the the dense the density of the pixels is four times that of 1080 which means that the front row can now be moved for, closer to the screen so students can be sitting closer to the screen and not see the pixels, which is, by the way, the reason why the front row parameters existed in the CTS design parameters is so that you're not sitting too close to the screen so you don't see the squares, so the little pixels. So therefore, now I've actually increased the capacity of the room. So we took rooms, literally, that seated 25 people that now seat 50 people because of the digital canvas. Interesting, because now you can get people closer to the screen, and you've got a big screen. You can get people farther from the screen. It it, it fits Wider in. Wider out, I can everything, and I you know yep. of course put collaboration displays in there too, so that they can turn any direction and see the content if they want. Okay, how does this all affect the 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 learning itself? Does this ha- have you seen uh, a quantifiable effect that people learn better? Okay, here's here's for. Anyone over the age of 40, this freaks them out because if they, if, you know, and I'm part of that generation, right? We, we usually, yeah, I got to go <laughs> single tap the browser. Then we go back to, but if you look at anyone under the age of 40 and look at their desktop, okay, their desktop is filled with content. So I'll be back up. Look at, let me just show you my desktop. Look at, look at how much stuff I've got open at the same time here on my desktop, mm-hmm. right? This is very typical for younger learners. They are multitaskers. They have lots of things open at the same time. So yeah, maybe the professor's intimidated by having four pieces of content up at the same time, but we're not teaching to the professor. We're teaching to the students. The students, even when you only have one content on, they've got two or three things open on their computers while they're sitting in class. So the multitasking actually doesn't bother them and actually they are used to it uh, in in the way that they learn and in fact, uh, it, it sort of enriches the experience because then they're paying attention to whatever you're putting up there all the time. It's almost like with with so much on the screen, there's if they're going to be distracted, they're going to be distracted by some of your other content rather than distracted by something that's right. that's irrelevant to class. You know, poking at their right, own cell phones they and can, not listening. Yeah, and if you have a, if you have a digital canvas, Justin, you can put up your current slide but put up your past slides too. So you never, a student never has to say, hey, can you go back to the last slide? That's one thing you can do with right. the digital canvas that you can't do without it. That's one example. Another example is, uh, you know, you can have closed caption content up, not on top of the image stuff that you're presenting. That okay. could be in a different location. Okay. Those are two examples. There's lots of other examples of content you could be putting up there. Like I said, the ability to, to you know, have students collaborate with the content on the screen, not just wirelessly share, but actually collaborate, having a QR code on the screen using, for example, you know, any of the collaboration software platforms, Bluescape or, mm-hmm. you know, Intel United, it doesn't really matter. And you scan a QR code and then they can collaborate in the classroom uh, with whatever content they're, they're working on with the rest of the class, especially in group projects. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause this for now because I, I, there's a lot more I want to hear. I'm interested to hear about uh, how do you prepare for a class in this environment? But join us for the after show, if you will, and we'll talk about it there. Okay. That was a really good interview, and it was it was it was really ramping yeah. up. Um, 
Uh, but we'll, we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll, get, we'll, we'll get more from Gary in the after show. But, but great interview. Um, nice, nice to hear it from a professor's standpoint. Um, I'm do you want to give us? I'm remembering back to my Sorry. university education when, when, when the digital canvas I had was a physics professor who had those stacking sliding chalkboards, you know, and he could finish filling a whole chalkboard of equations and then slide that one up and fill another. That yeah. was uh, that was the digital canvas when I was in school. The so, digital uh, canvas. Yeah, I wish the, I could. I wish I could learn from one of these today. The digital canvas for me was. I remember my old maths professor and he used to get bored when we were doing exercises, so he would just get somebody's hockey stick and start flicking pieces of chalk all over the room so you're trying to do math exercises while you were ducking and diving out of the way of chalk rubbers and, and chalk. But hey, a long time ago. We threw some questions up on the screen for you guys. Isn't this fab? Love this. We're going to, can we use this more? Is this rental, by the way, JK, or is this a bought piece of equipment? Oh, no, no, no. This is SDVOE. We own all of our equipment. And it's yeah. all powered by SDVOE, so of course, uh, all that side is free for us. Happy days. Well, we asked you a couple of questions. We're getting uh, some, some answers in thick and fast there. Uh, so keep them coming in. Some interesting answers as well. So we'll review those uh, in the after show. A uh, bit of housekeeping from you, Justin, if you wouldn't mind. What's this? <laughs> uh, well, this is the hashtag. If you want to give us feedback on the show, if you want to ask questions for the after show, you can find us on Twitter using hashtag SDVOE live. Or if you're joining us live right now, just get in the chat right below my feet there and you'll get us. Um, if you are watching us on a live YouTube stream or an on-demand YouTube or same thing on Twitter, uh, you will miss the after show there. Uh, to catch the after show, you have to be logged into the SDVOE Academy. That's totally free. Go to sdvoe.org slash live and you'll find your way there. Sign up for an account and you'll catch that after show. Uh, the, the show and the after show are all available on demand, uh, but the after show is only available on demand uh, in the Academy, whereas the show is available on our YouTube channel, so check it out and subscribe there as well. We've got to keep some of our crown jewels internal, haven't we? Um, episode 14, come on, I can't believe we're episode 14 or 13 already. Um, so what, 14 is, is on June 1. Um, this, this, this looks interesting. This looks, this looks great. We're really looking forward to getting stuck into the, uh, into the course for this. The new AV Frontier eSports, tell us more. Uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, uh, our guest is from New Era Tech. Uh, this is a systems integrator who has had some focus on the eSports uh, arena. And, and Mike is going to really talk about the, the sort of business side of eSports. We'll touch on the technology, of course, but, but what I'm interested in is the way that, for example, uh, some of the smaller universities are starting to use eSports as a, as a recruiting tool. Um, and it has real implications on their university business. Um, and, of course, we'll see how technologies like AV over IP and, in particular, SDVOE uh, can fit that application. Uh, but I think it's going to be a really interesting show uh, to look at the bigger picture of what eSports means today. Absolutely. Uh, don't forget, get your questions into the chat uh, in, in for Gary for the after show. Uh, but it's time we wrapped up this, I'm afraid. Uh, we're wrapping up the main show now. Stick around, though. We'll see you in the after show very shortly. Let's go, let's go, get, some, uh, let's go get ourselves ready, JK. See you in a minute.